Hello and welcome back. How's everybody doing? Alright. Let's go into the next one. Um, So many here. Oh my god, I have to start killing these characters. Oh, rip gilly. Alright, um, this one's going to be called Barbarian. Alright, here we go. Um, should be a Giblin Bard. Oh man, Storm Herald Triton Storm Herald Triton Merfolk Barbarian. Just archive them. Um, yeah, no, I know Ollie. I can, but I like looking at them. I like having a trillion of them there. Hmm. Usually, what I do is I actually put them in just little, uh, little folders. You know what I mean? I can name one folder like Eric, one Aaron, one Ollie. You know, and shove them all inside there. But and one NBCs or you know whatever. But anyways, okay, so. Barbarian. We have to we have to roll for the stats for this. Um uh cross your fingers for our Ra Raul, right? <laughs> oh my god. So what's the rule about re-rolling stats? What's the rule? Is it if it's if the total modifier is a negative two or is it under a plus two or, oh man, um, there there is a rule, um, about it, um, what is the rule about it? Because five is I think a negative three because nine eight seven six yeah five is negative three. And a seven is negative two, so it's already a negative uh, five right there. And a nine is a negative, makes a negative six total. And it's plus there's a total of a negative three. You can re-roll. So it's, um, you can re-roll if your total modifier is, I think, negative two or lower or something like that. All right, all right. So I can do so without, without feeling like I'm cheating. Oop, cancel. Um... What a fucking turnaround. Are you kidding me right now? Okay, that was a big turnaround. All right, so we're going Barbarian, and it's going for a game that Raul is actually playing in. Um, so going for a game that Raul is actually playing in. Um, so I don't want to be goofy with it, right? I want to I want to be legit with the design of the character. We get a 16 there, and he's level 4, so we can theoretically bump that to an 18. With a race, we can make that a 20 which would be nice. But I always design things based off of uh, survivability, so constitution is important too. And I also like the bear trusted barbarian concept. So we want an okay dex, a good con. Do we go medium? If we go variant human, you could go medium armor mastery and go with a 16 uh, dexterity. Um, but then your constitution doesn't matter as much if you already have a plus... Um, Hmm. I don't know. Merfolk Barbarian? Eh. All right, let's look, look down the list again. Constitution and Strength. Those are going to be your big focuses, right? Unless we can come with a really cool Dex Barbarian concept. Because uh, we are going bare-chested. Um, I mean, what if you are going to be a Dex Barbarian, what would your um, weapons be, right? What would your, your weapon options be? Um, what would you want to use? Because light, medium armor, and all weapons, plus of course shields. The idea of bare chested with a with a, a rapier, a rapier barbarian. Um. Hmm. I mean, Triton. I remember Triton's in the. It's in what? Volos. Do I have Volos over here? Hold on. One second. <clears throat> I don't recall if I have a Volos PDF, but I know I have Volos in my hands. So um, let's just look up Triton really quickly. Uh, I would pee just Triton. <laughs> are they under beasts? Nope. Are they under humanoids? Uh, not for what I'm looking at. That doesn't help me. It's probably around page 120 if I had to guess off the top of my head. Mm, Goliath. Oh, no. 115. So, just shy of 120. 
Aquatic Crusaders. Uh, plus one strength, plus one con, plus one charisma. Um, hmm. Is there a whip weapon? Whip is a weapon. It's kind of bad, though. Um, intent towards lawful good. Speed is 30, swimming is 30, amphibious. Uh, control air and water. You can cast fog cloud. Um, starting at third level, you can cast Gust of Wind. Starting at fifth level, you can ca uh, cast Wall of Water. See it in the sidebar. Uh, once you cast this, uh, cast a spell with this trait, you can't do so again until you finish a short or long rest. This is uh, Emissary of the Sea. You can communicate simple ideas with beasts that can breathe water. They get understands the meaning of your words, though they have no special ability to understand them in return. Guardian of the Depths. Uh, you have resistance to cold damage and can ignore the drawbacks caused by a deep underwater environment. I mean, plus one strength, con, and charisma. What were those stats again? So, you can make this your con, making it a 16. You can make this your strength, making it a 17. Or vice versa. Probably make this, uh, yeah. And then you can make this your charisma, making it a 14. Uh, dump his intelligence and give him a decent wisdom. Hmm. Hmm. It's not bad. Um. It's not bad. And you go with the trident, obviously, for a weapon, right? Um. All right, what other races... Because he might not want to be a monstrous race. So I'm going to fiddle with some other ideas first. Um, like if I made him a Kenku, he might be like, dude, I don't want to play a Kenku. Uh, um, and it was for a legit game coming up. So I'm like, yeah, I'll try to respect that a little bit. I don't know. A Goliath Barbarian is pretty on the nose. <laughs> um, Rocket has 17 strength easily. With uh, was a plus one con, so you can do uh, what is a sixteen strength, eighteen sorry, eighteen and sixteen walking in, that's easy to do. Mm. Glides are kind of boring. You just make really good like tough people. I think glides are like the poor man's uh, dwarf, if I remember correctly. The idea of an ASMR barbarian sounds really fun. Hmm. Hmm. Look over here again. Con is should be the set. Nope, it's the third one. It makes more sense. Triton, Orc, Minotaur, Lizard Folk from Volos, Human. Variant Human, of course, always works. What were the stats again? Uh, two odds, so Variant definitely works for Human. Um, hobo. Hmm, Half Orc. Halfling. I love the idea of halfling barbarians. They just make me giddy with happiness. Uh, Goliath. Goblin. Goblin. Goblins are a little OP. It's kind of funny, actually, how OP goblins are. If we want to do a dex barbarian, a, uh, a goblin dex barbarian could be some serious OP. Oh, I don't know. What's up, Rick? How you doing, buddy? Uh, a goblin dex barbarian could be some serious power. Well, I don't know. Let's look at... Um, Go back to Volos. I know I just said maybe no monstrous races, but oh man, I don't know. Now I'm kind of feeling a goblin barbarian. I think it's again around page 120. Uh, again, I don't have the PDF for this one, so I'm not going to throw it up on the screen. So goblins, plus two dexterity, plus one strength, dark vision, but it's fury of the small. When you damage a creature with an attack or spell and the creature's size is larger than yours, you can cause the attack to, uh, or spell to deal extra damage to the creature. This extra damage equals your level, so it'd be four. Once you use this trait, you can't do it again until you finish a short rest. Amazing for a barbarian. And then nimble escape. You can disengage or hide uh, as bonus actions on your turns. I don't know. A uh, gnome barbarian is pretty amazing. Okay. We're going to have to do a gnome barbarian. And we're going to have to be a dex based gnome barbarian, I think. Um, so it's, what is it? Plus one con plus two dex. Plus one con plus two dex. Let's, let's start fiddling with these stats. 
So let's make the dex, uh, toss a 16 on dex, making it an 18. We're going to toss a 15 on con, making it a 16. That automatically is going to bring his AC up to a 17. Naked, he's going to have a 17 AC. Um, now let's fiddle with some more. Uh, let's bring his intelligence to an 8 because he's a goblin and I'm uh, I'm a goblinist. I don't know, a, a charisma of 8 might be more fun. No, let's go charisma of eight because he's a goblin. He just, it's not that he's a douche. It's just he can't get his point across. People aren't listening to him because he's a goblin. Other people's racism is how the charisma plays up. I'm sure he's going to be a little stereotypical anyways. All right, uh, moving on. Strength. Uh, we don't want a weak gobo. So we're going to give his strength maybe a 13. Because we don't want him to weak. He is a barbarian. Uh, that leaves us with a 10 and a 12. 10 intelligence, 12 wisdom. You need that wisdom for some skills. We might switch the strength or wisdom based off of what feats we choose, if any feats whatsoever. Um, I'm liking this. Okay. We're going to go Barbarian. We're going to go level 4. We're going to roll for health. So it's going to be roll uh, 3d12. Not fucking bad. I hope Raul can point this stream to his DM and be like, yo, DM, this was literally made legit using the rules. Look at this right here. All right, so uh, 26 plus automatic 12 at first level. Uh, 20, that's a 38 plus, what is it? Three times four is 12, correct? So 38, 50 health points. Amazing. Loving it. Loving it. Um... Uh, four. Uh, race, we're going to go goblin. Alignment, I don't really care about. We're, backgrounds, start tossing out background ideas, please. I would super appreciate that. Let's go over to uh, here. Uh, rage. Oh, got to love rage. And how many times a day can you do rage? It's based off of level, I believe. Oh, they don't have a chart on this one? Oh, that's super annoying to not have a chart. Ugh. I'm going to have to use roll 20, aren't I? Uh, roll 20s is garbage. For any of this stuff. Uh, class. Um, rage. Oy vey. Okay. Um, shrink you up. Let's go over to Barbarian. Uh, unarmored defense. Name. Unarmored. Defense. Uh, class. And then just barbarian. Shrink it up. Um, folk hero goblin is also pretty, pretty amazing. I like the idea of folk. Oh, man. I like the idea of folk hero. Um, yeah, we'll do folk hero goblin. That's good. It's good stuff. It's a good suggestion. I'll take it. Uh, level two. Look at this. This is even showing what their uh, skill options are. This is uh, not a good. Oh well, that's fine. Um, I feel like we need to change the music for this for doing a barbarian. Let's go combat. Let's do combat music instead. Hmm. Where is some combat music? Let's go fantasy. Because I ain't scared of Twitch. Taking down my stream. Not until they give me a reason to. Skirmish. Here we go. What's up, Midori? Good night, Midori. Have yourself a great night. I appreciate you always coming by and hanging out. Uh, reckless attack. And thank you for the bitty bits. All right. Reckless attack. That's what it's called. Reckless attack. The next one's going to be danger sense. Uh, reckless attack. Uh, class bar barian. I wonder if he um plays on roll twenty with his friends, because then I can kind of just export the character for him, which would be nice. Um, what's this one called again? Um, danger sense. Uh, class barbarian. <laughs> oh man 
Dapper Coat. That's funny. Uh, level three, you can now rage three times. And then you get your primal path. And we're going to have to choose a path in a second. So rage is now three times. Um, where are paths afterwards? Oh, God, I'm going to have to do this, aren't I? Uh, 5e Barbarian. Barbarian. Uh, suggestions on which path this Barbarian is going. That's right, I'm saying it funny. Barbarian. Um, extra damage for fourth level is two. So we'll worry about that when we add the weapon on there. Reckless danger, so primal path. I think they're only going to show one path on here, and that's going to be the uh, Berserker, yeah, which is annoying. Do we need that open? Berserker. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm assuming full barbarian. He specifically said level four barbarian, so I'm gonna assume full barbarian. Also, why would you dip out before level four when you can get the ability mod and feet or whatever? Uh, rage damage is uh, for strength, though. It's not worth. Oh, good points. Rage damage is for strength. You're almost like ignoring a class feature. That's one of the reasons why you don't do a, a dex barbarian. I forgot about that. It's kind of shitty. It's annoying, actually, but oh well. I'm assuming he's going to have to grab a rapier, because, you know, it's annoying. Oh well. Make him bear. Also, bear totem. Hmm. Go barbarian over here. Totem barbarian. Uh, this is the way Maggie went, which is spirit seeker. You get the totem spirits. So, bear, you while raging, you have resistance to all damage except psychic damage, which is amazing. Uh, I don't think you get the next level until level 5, though. Or 6. They should level 6. Oh, that's Battle Rager. That's because of the books. Where is the Rage? She's his path. Uh, she's a berserker. Uh, berserker. Frenzy. You can go into a Frenzy if you do something the duration of a single melee attack uh, as a bonus action. So, well, it's just an extra attack, which is cool because you can do like the. Uh, most barbarian uh, split between uh, dex and strength. Yeah, I know. It's just annoying that that one is just. Um. Okay. So. Hmm. Bear totem is crazy good. Yeah, we're gonna go bear totem. Okay. Let's go totem barbarian bear. Um. So let's do spirit seeker. Need the ability to cast. So we're gonna do spirit seeker. Grab this, copy. It's gonna be from Path of the Totem Warrior. Paste, it's gonna go Spirit Seeker. Um, class, uh, Path of the Totem Warrior. Oh, nope, I did not want that. I had to go with Attunement. Apparently you don't like that word, but that's fine. Um, beast sense, so we're gonna throw that on there and uh, speak with animals, throw that on there, bam. Um, next one we're gonna do is where are you? Uh, totem spirit is gonna be bear, there you go, bear spirit. Why am I typoing so badly? So it's Totem Spirit. I actually decided I wanted to change the way I was doing that anyways. Uh, totem Spirit. And then we're going to go Path of the Totem Warrior again. <clears throat> there we go. Shrink those up. Cool. Get those on there. That makes them super tough, tough, tough. Uh, let's see. Now we're going to go Folk Hero. Where's Backgrounds? Did I close this out forever ago? I did. Uh, 5e Backgrounds. Alright. Shrink you. So, for Backgrounds, we were saying Folk Hero, which, I mean, without even necessarily looking at arguments, I kind of just love the idea of Folk Hero. So animal handling and survival is useful. Uh, vehicles land is useful. One artisan tool is useful. Uh, the equipment is useful. 
But the idea that people are going to, are, are your, I, I mean, the rustic hospitality is just so cool. I love the idea of it. Uh, we're definitely doing this. Um, come all to the top. I mean, it also forces the DM to, uh, to be a little creative. You know what I mean? Forces the DM to have a little bit of fun. Oop, not feet. Background. Thank y'all. And shrink. Um, or gladiator. Nah. Uh, All right, up here, skills, animal handling, survival, uh, one artisan tool. So suggestions on artisan tools, please. Uh, vehicles, land. Proficients, we'll just go with, I don't know, intelligence for funsies. Um, cook's utensils, ooh. Uh, cook's utensils, make the goblin cook. Uh, cooking utensils. I spelled everything wrong. Par for the course. Intelligence. Awesome. Um, uh, proficiencies. Uh, language is definitely going to be common. Ampersand uh, gabo. Uh, armor is going to be... Uh, light and, oh, sorry, light comma, medium, ampersand, shields. And weapons are going to be all. All, simple, and martial. Martial, martial, martial. Okay. Yay. Nice and clean there. Goblin Siegel, he's just a cook. What if he cooks other goblins? Oh! Ah, uh, what is it? Ancestral Guardian? Are you allowing you a Ancestral Guardian? Oh, is that the one that Maggie was talking about beforehand that she absolutely loves? I'll totally check out uh, Ancestral Guardian in a second. I, if I remember correctly, it was a nifty, it was a nifty one. Let's go, um... Uh, 5e Ancestral Guardian. Uh, Path of the Ancestral Guardian. Starting at third level, the warrior, uh, it's in him, blah, blah, blah. while you're raging, you cast bonus action and choose to turn the creature with the five feet of you until the study next turn and your rage ends. The chosen creature is disadvantaged on any attack roll that doesn't target you. And then the shield, yeah, meh. I'm not going to do that one. Path of the Storm Herald. Um, while raging, and just aura five damage. See, Tundra, Storm Soul, Meh, Path of the Zealot. Oh, the Zealot was the one Maggie was talking about beforehand. Divine Fury was something that she loved, and Warrior of the Gods was something that she liked. So that was the one that she was talking about beforehand. But nah, I'm not gonna go with any of those. Back to Folk Hero. Uh, let's grab all of these items. I don't think I grabbed Animal Handling and Survival yet, so I'll have to do that. Animal Handling. Survival. Let's just throw these items right here for now. Um, back up to folk hero. Got, 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 got. Grab that ability down there, and we'll leave you open for ideas later on. Close out backgrounds. Um, don't need player's compendium. Don't need you open. We do need the racial stuff, which sadly I can't just copy paste, which is a little annoying. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, Volo's Goblin. Um, somebody was douchey enough to put this up here, maybe? Fury of the Small? Nobody? I can't just copy and paste. Wah, wah, wah. Okay. That's not just going to let me. That's okay. I'll just have to actually hand type it in. That's what I get. I actually put the book over here so it's easier to do. No easy peasy copy paste. I know, I know, Rick. All right, let's see. Dark vision, I can easily grab, right? But um, let's see. First is gonna be nibble escape. 
Um, racial goblin. Goblin? Oh, gosh. Uh, you can take this, uh, the disengage or hide action as a bonus action on each of your turns. Or hide action as a bonus action on each of your turns. Uh, shrinky, shrinky, you. Go away. Open the next one. This one is Fury of the Small. Racial Goblin. Hmm. <laughs> All right. So when you damage a creature with an attack or a spell and the creature size is larger than yours... Comma. <clears throat> you can cause the attacker spell to deal damage to the creature. Wait, you can cause the attacker spell to deal extra damage to the creature. Yay. Um, what does it say after that? The extra damage equals your level. And lastly, uh, once you use this trait, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. <sighs> you cannot use it again until you finish a short or long rest. There we go. Any other gobbo traits that I have to throw on here? Dark vision, of course, size small. Um, yeah, I guess dark vision is size small. I'm gonna grab dark vision off of some other race. Let's go uh, 5e orcs. I love orc pub, they're great. Except sadly that wasn't on there for me. This is not going to be on there either. Oh, God. So annoying. Come on. There we go. Dark vision. Copy. And go away. Uh, dark vision. Racial goblin. And then, thanks to your goblin blood, you have a superior blah, blah, blah. Yay. All right. Uh, on our danger sense. And I really don't care about redoing all of these. Just the ones I feel like super important. Okay, let's start getting some items on this character. Did we decide what weapon this character is going to be using as their primary weapon? You know what I mean? Uh, 5e weapons. So let's look at what, uh, it has to be a, a finessable weapon for it to be one that works. So, um, whip is finessable and has reach, um, for whatever value that is. Um, a short sword is obviously an option. Scimitar is definitely an option. It's finessable and light. Um, rapier is of course an option. I kind of like the idea of him being like a dual wielding character. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody says rapier, of course. We're just gonna have to like, um, we're just gonna have, I mean, rapier is just the most powerful option, right? It's like everybody's like, rapier. I mean, all you remember we were talking about this the other day where I was like, I don't want a rapier for this character. It makes no sense. Can I have an elven thin blade that works like a rapier? And he was like, yes, y y yes, you can. And I was like, thanks, Ollie. Um, <laughs> Trident, somebody says, but Trident doesn't work for for, um, sadly for finesse, so it just doesn't work. All right, let's go with the rapier, because you have to. 
Let's we'll refluff it later on. Damage is dex. Uh, damage is 1d8. It is, of course, going to be piercing. Um, scimitar is a good one. Scimitar is also a light weapon, isn't it? It is. So we're going to get to that in a moment, okay? So for now, yay, rapier. It stinks that you don't get the rage damage, but, you know, you do have your fury, fury of the small damage from time to time, which is nice. He is a tough little mother effer, and this does allow him to have a shield if he wants to. Let's go over to Barbarian. You gain a great axe or a martial melee weapon, which we grab the rapier. You can have two hand axes or any simple weapon, and you have an explorer's pack um, and four javelins. So let's grab the explorer's pack. Let's grab the four javelins. And then what's the simple weapon of choice? Um, we'll get to that in a moment. So... Um, Here. Oh, cheese. Cheese and crackers. Um, hmm. It's funny. I use, uh, I say the, I say the phrase, Jesus Christ, all the time. But like my mother-in-law is not a big fan of the exclamation. And so I'm trying not, I, not to say it in front of my daughter. Cause the last thing I want is like my mother-in-law to be babysitting her granddaughter and have her granddaughter saying that. And being upset by it so I'm just like cheese and crackers it's really goofy and I have a hard time taking myself uh, seriously as a person saying it but you know the things you do for family simple weapon of choice I kind of want to go with short bow um, goblin with a short bow I like the idea of it uh, yeah let's, go, let's give him a short bow so its range is uh, 8320 Let's give him a short bow for his other light weapon. Hmm. Short bow. Dex based. Damage is 1d6. It's dex based. It's also piercing. You do have a shit job against trees, aren't you, buddy? Uh, range is bam. Okay. Um, is it simple melee? Does it say simple melee? And this is any simple weapon right here. This one was any martial melee. This one's any simple weapon. Um, okay. Moving on. Uh, I already have handle handling and survival. So it's athletics, intimidate, nature, or perception. Let's go with, I think, nature and perception. Let's go with those ones. He's already got a penalty to intimidate, so why even try to oomph that? You know what I mean? Um, he's just not going to be very intimidating. He's just going to murder people. His speed is 30, which is nice. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think it's everything that you get here. I think it's everything that you get here. I think this is all good. Okay. Did we apply everything from his background? We did, except for the like little fun details. Um. I think it's just ability score or feet. Okay, that's gonna bring us to the ability score or feet argument. All right, so before we decide ability to score feet, let's look at his stats again. <sighs> the only odd number is strength, so the only feat that's going to just straight up assist him is strength. So we'd have to either increase his maybe dexterity to a, um, a 20, increasing his chance to hit, his damage, and his armor class, or um, uh, a feat that enhances strength as well as something else, or kind of just fiddle around from there, right? So, whichever one improves dual wielding, that's a, that's a good point that you bring up there, uh, Plex. Because that's the, kind of the thing I've been uh, fiddling with getting to. Which is uh, the not defensive duelist, it's, um, it's a, a mediocre feat. It's a dual wielder. Okay, plus one to AC when wielding a separate weapon in each uh, hand. So, that's useful instantly right off the bat. I wonder if Ollie, who says you can use uh, the parrying dagger... 
um, as a as, as a shield, blah, 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 blah thing. I wonder if he allows this feat to give you an additional plus one AC for free, even though you're technically carrying a shield in one hand, because it's also technically a weapon. It gives you three to AC instead of two. If he is awake and around, I'm curious what his opinion is of that. You can use two weapon fighting even when uh, one uh, isn't light. So you can totally go with a scimitar in your other hand, which could be fun. Or... Um, uh, even when uh, even when the one-handed melee weapons you're wielding aren't light, so you can totally go dual rapier, which could be a lot of fun. So, so what you're saying is, um, you can you get plus three to AC, you can attack with it, and um, uh, I mean, in my opinion, that's OP. That's unfairly OP, but doesn't really affect me because that's not my. Uh, character. I just buff that character, make him even more powerful. Um, no plus two. The parrying dagger isn't a shield; it's a plus one AC dagger that you can um, make offhand attacks with. It's still powerful uh, because, technically speaking, the feat is what you needed to be able to get that. So it's just a. Um, I didn't see that you said only plus one, but either way, uh, it doesn't really matter. So. Um, plus one to AC, wielding a separate melee weapon in each hand. Um, you can use two weapon fighting even with one hand. Blah, blah, blah. Because I like the idea of parrying daggers. I actually used to be a big fan of the um, 3.0 uh, armor and equipment guide book. There was, what do they call it? Distanta. They were like bracers uh, that you could wear that give you a plus one to AC on top of any armor that you could wear. They were more or less think of like what Batman has, like a chink, oh, look at that, Batman begins, I blocked your sword, you stupid man. Um, uh, I loved those items and I used them all the time. You know what I mean? That was like my way of getting like um, a plus one to AC with my dual wielding characters. So I, I actually, in my arguments against Ollie is simply your, your decision is a powerful in the favor of that character decision. Um, however, I don't care because I think it's a completely fair one. You just make that uh, item exorbitantly expensive. You make it a 150 gold piece item or something like that, and it makes up for the gap. Uh, but if you make it like a 10 gold piece item, eh, it's it's easy power for anybody who can get their hands on it if there's no re pre prerequisites. Every cleric should have one. Every wizard should have one. All right, you can draw or stow uh, two one-handed weapons when you uh, normally, and I'm, if you use the argument it's a, a, a martial weapon, then fine. Every person with access to martial weapons should have one. Um, that's nifty. So I like the idea of a double rapier wielding uh, hobgoblin barbarian. The problem is to make a second attack as a uh, dual wielding requires a bonus action. Do Barbarians use their bonus actions for anything else? Well, Goblin Barbarians can use their bonus actions to disengage, which is fine, or to hide, which is fine. So more or less every round of combat, you're doing an extra attack, disengaging, or, um, or hiding. I don't think they have any other intrinsic abilities that require bonus actions. So it's actually kind of beneficial to give them that ability because it's... Um, you know, it's more, yeah, it's, it's actually beneficial to give them that ability. Um, yeah, it's more or less like Wonder Woman bracers. That's funny. Uh, I'm sure I could find it in here. Uh, let's go 3.0, uh, distanta. Um, sure results. I'm pretty sure it's distanta. No. Let's go uh, 3.0 uh, arms and equipment guide to Stanta. God damn it. Okay. I'm sure I have it here. I'm hating myself for having recently cleaned up my uh, my collection that's readily available. You know what I mean? Oh, well. Oh, well. I gotta change this music, too. I'm kind of getting annoyed listening to the same thing over and over again. Let's do this one. Oh, no, no, no. It's this one. All right. 
Uh, where were we? Mm -hmm. uh, is dual wielding worth it without the two weapon fighting uh, fighter fighting style? I mean, that feat helps the two weapon fighting. Uh, you know what? You're right because you're losing your uh, dexterity bonus to damage, aren't you? It's still extra damage, still an extra 1d8 attack with a pretty good chance to hit. With one level dip fighter, which should all. Uh, <laughs> Remind me. Level one, does that also give you the healing ability? One level dip? Second wind, it does. Fighting style and second wind. I kind of like the idea of going uh, Ranger. Two level dip Ranger of the new Rangers because they're fucking powerful. You know? A two level dip Ranger would be super useful, but I think you have to have at least 13 wisdom to do that. <laughs> All right, let's keep looking at other feats. That was the that was the first one that I was fiddling with the idea of from the beginning. Because I also like the idea of just grabbing a shield and using a rapier and a shield. It's fine. You just call it a buckler or whatever you want. All right, acrobatic, uh, alchemist, alert, uh, athlete, uh, bar, blade mastery. Obviously, blade mastery is useful because on your turn, you can instead use your uh, dodge action. So your... Your reaction, because you currently don't have any abilities. Your Barbarian has zero abilities that require reaction right now. So you currently use your reaction to give yourself a plus one to AC. So, yay. Um, let's see. Bountiful, Brawny, Burglar, Charger, uh, Critter, uh, Defending Duelist. I mean, I just think this one's such a boring ability. Diplomat. Um, Dragon Wings Drow. What is that? Du du durable. Ah. I don't think I'm going to end up liking any of these. It's probably going to be a plus to stat. Or, um, Duelist. Uh, I forgot. I so hard forgot about the. You don't get the dexterity to damage with the offhand. I so forgot about that. If you're not a fighter. Or a ranger, you don't even get the option to dexterity to damage with your off hands. You just don't even get that. Um, God, that like so nerfs two weapon fighting hard. So nerfs two weapon fighting. I mean, if you're a rogue or something like that, and you can get your sneak attack in that off hand, okay, sure, 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 sure. But otherwise, not getting your dexterity to that damage, that's hard. that's painful. Magic Initiate, <laughs> Martial Adapts, Medic, Mobile is useful. I mean, you can use that dash action. When you use dash action, difficult terrain, but you don't get dash as a bonus action, do you? So it's not even worth it. Oh wait, as a Totem Barbarian, you do get dash as a bonus action, don't you? As I keep having to remind Maggie, no Maggie, you don't get it for a free action. You get it as a bonus action. I think that's what you get. They only show Berserker here, don't they? Yeah, because they're annoying. Um, Barbarian. Because she always tries to get it as a uh, free action. Um, totem, option, thick skins. Or is that an eagle thing? No, that's an eagle thing. When you aren't, uh, when, you, when you're raging and aren't wearing heavy armor, you can use a dash as a bonus action. It's an eagle specific thing, so no. Back to feats. Um, 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 mounted combat. I mean, you could reduce the dexterity by a little bit and grab the moderately armored feet, and then you can wear medium armor as well. So let's, let's fiddle with that idea for a second. Let's go uh, 5e armors. Obviously, breastplate would be the ideal situation, assuming you can walk in with it. It's up to your DM, of course. Um, why are you... Being funny mouse. Or the battery in this mouse is dying. I haven't taken care of that in ages. Okay, this is garbage. This is a bunch of... Alright, let's go to medium armor. Uh, half plate would be pretty ideal. Um, does the medium... Does it get rid of the... Uh, increases strength or dex by one, which is nice. 
Oh, no, no, not that one. Where's the Medium Armor Mastery? What is that called? It's actually called Medium Armor Mastery. Uh, it doesn't impose dexterity, and it increases to three instead of two. So theoretically, this character with br half plate, uh, a goblin. Oh, man. Oh, man. So goblin barbarian with the moderately, sorry, the medium armor mastery feat with a plus three dexterity. I mean, it, that, that 15 is better than what the constitution is giving you. So you would theoretically want to reduce your dexterity by two. Um, mm, but if you're going that route, wouldn't you just want to focus more on strength and use your rage strength ability? You know what I mean? Like you would take that 16, you put it over into strength. Uh, how did I do this? And that was a 15. And then when you grab this feet. Mm, so I'm just fiddling with numbers for a second. So the dexterity was naturally a 16. You put that over in strength, giving you a 16 there. So it's already one lower, but that puts your 13 over to dex, which becomes a 15. So it's still one too small. Not entirely worth it. You have to put your 13 in Constitution, dropping you by a crap ton. Doesn't matter as much because your AC is going to be higher and your just whole build is different and you don't rely on that for your AC. Putting your 15 into Dexterity, making that a 17. You would never buff that again. You would leave it as a 17 for all eternity because there's really no benefit beyond that. Um, so your AC would be 15 plus 3 is 18. You grab a shield is 20. Um, your strength would be 16, so your damage would go down by one, chance it would go down by one, but you could grab a bunch of different weapon, I guess a longsword, really, because if you're working with a shield, I guess a longsword. And then if you rage, you get the plus extra damage, but you're kind of like ruining the feel of the character. Nah, we gotta stay with what we got. 